Hello and welcome back to another best of the year. Today we're going to talk about the very best NAS to buy at the end of 2020 for virtual machines. For those that aren't aware, a virtual machine is largely comparable to a standard PC. But with the advantage that not only can it be accessed from anywhere pretty much via the network or via the internet with very small data concerns, but on top of that, it can also be accessed locally by multiple users in a business environment that want to have all of the data and all of the handling of that data all in a central location, often a NAS or some kind of large server of one shape or form. Virtual machines have become very, very desirable in a number of companies due to their ability to roll back um, software updates, uh, be able to duplicate operating systems and desktops and ultimately be able to centralize a lot of the operations. There's also a lot of ways in which you can save money. And of course, that remote access is always desirable too. We've made loads of videos here on the channel about the utility of VMs, not just in NAS, but just typically how to convert your physical system environment into a VM equivalent, as well as deploying those VMs on a NAS. And a number of different NAS systems do support these. But in order for you to get, the, get it right the first time for your home or business needs, because VMs are becoming very desirable to homes, that's why today's list exists. I want to talk about the three best NASes to buy. Doesn't necessarily mean they were released this year, but right now these are the best three NASes to buy for your virtual machine needs. Despite the fact that most network attached storage devices that have at least a single Intel-based CPU can support VMs, it's worth highlighting that just because they can doesn't make them the best. And in order for any NAS to qualify for even light consideration to be in the favor of the top three, they have to conform to the following criteria. Number one, they have to have been released and physically released and available for sale for across the bulk of the world before October 31st, 2020. The reason being that there's lots of powerhouse NASs out there, but at the same time, these powerhouse NAS devices, they, you know, they sometimes become vaporware, they become different versions, that when you, you're not really buying a thing, you're buying a configuration, and ultimately, I'm only looking at solutions that are available to buy up to that point at the very least. They can even be released in 2018 and 19, but it's immaterial. All I will consider at this point are NASs that were released prior to that date. Next, I am only considering desktop solutions, which I know is going to be an area of contention. A number of users out there that go into the field of having multiple VMs will use rack mounts, specifically the medium to high business users. The reason I'm not looking at rack mount devices in this list is largely because I would say more than 60 to 70 percent of available rack mount solutions in 2020 are good for VMs anyway. This is about a lot of prosumer users, home prosumer, small medium business kind of users. These are the ones when they look at VMs will often err towards a desktop solution due to reasons of storage space, not having a server room or a server cabinet, and that's why I'm only looking at desktop NASs in today's video. Um, also, every single one of these solutions needs to support at least two VMs, whilst at the same time maintaining their own system software with the hardware inside. What I mean by that is a lot of NASs will say to you that you can run a couple of VMs on our machine, and that's great, but the resources that go into supporting those VMs are then not available to run the initial system. And therefore, you have tremendous slowdown. And ultimately, they're not really running the VMs. They're running the VMs, but no one can get to them. So every solution I'm talking about today has to have at least a decent level of hardware internally to support the VMs inside. And if it doesn't have that, we're not going to talk about it. Also, we're talking about combined hardware software solutions. These are NASes that not only have the hardware that support multiple VMs at a given time, as well as the day-to-day -day operations of a NAS, but also they have to have their own software to do it. First party, and it has to be reliable. So consequently, the NAS that you do choose to use has to include the ability to host those VMs. You're gonna to need to get the VM image from another website or maybe one you already have from a virtual equivalent you've created a vhd or a, um, a vmdk of your existing hardware uh, computer but the uh, the necessary software has to be included with your nas in order to port it we're not looking at uh, VirtualBox. we're not looking unfortunately at the asus door series you use a third party tool we are looking at brands that have their own 
lastly, we are only looking at solutions that have at least three years of warranty. We're not going any lower than three. The reason being that when you look at these solutions, you want to know that you've got something, you know, generally this kind of solution is going to cost some serious money. And I want to know that I've got at least two to three years of warranty behind me and the ability to extend it if I want. Because you're going to be wrapping a lot of business around this. And even if you're a home user, chances are the reason you're experimenting with VMs at home is due to some kind of business or financial incentive. So I'm only looking at systems that have got that level of warranty support. But before we go any further... Before we go into the three that are for me the best uh, NASs for VMs, I want to talk about the runner-up. I want to talk about the participation medal. I want to talk about the one that got so close but didn't quite make the cut. And that is the Synology DS1621XS+. Uh, it is a damn fine NAS and it is a NAS that we've talked about on the channel before. It is a 10GBE Xeon-powered system that can definitely handle a few VMs. However... The reason I picked the three solutions for today's video is because I'm coming at it from small, medium, large, entry, standard, and power. And unfortunately, although the 1621 XS will come into the middle bracket, unfortunately, in that bracket of standard VM for business support, I would argue that the one I've picked is better overall if you're looking to buy an ad specifically for virtual machines. It's still a great system. It's got NVMe SSD cache upgrades. It's got 10 GBE. It's got Xeon. It's good. But I think it's been pipped to the post by our second place model. But let's go into the three that we've picked. Let's go for the, right now, the more cost-effective VM NAS. And again, cost-effective still means what, what suitable for this endeavor. And that is a Synology, the DS1621+. Now, the 1621 Plus released very early doors in October 2020, so it was very close to the finish line there for our, cho our choices, is a Ryzen-based 6-bay NAS. This system, with its quad-core Ryzen at 2.2 GHz, although not GPU embedded, still arrives with support of ECC DDR4 memory, 4 gig by default that goes all the way up to 32 gig. It's also got four 1GBE LAN ports on the rear, and it's also got a PCIe upgrade slot, Gen, Gen 3 times 8 and internal NVMe SSD caching bays. The reason this is my more affordable pick for a VM here is even though it's not a Xeon CPU or an Intel Core or a Pentium, it's still a very, very good CPU for file handling. It is a Ryzen SoC, an embedded Ryzen. It means that it's a file handling and file processing is very very good and we're seeing this CPU on more and more SMB NAS solutions both in desktop and rack mount. One might argue that the 1621 XS Plus that I said didn't make the cut is far more powerful than this. It too is a six bay with it pretty much all of the features of this 1621 we're talking about and even more so with 10 GBE and a Xeon but with that device arriving at about 16 to 1700 quid and the 1621 arriving at about 800 to 850, there's a huge difference in price there. And the 1621 Plus with Synology's own virtual machine manager software, which is so well aligned with things like VMware and Hyper-V. They've done so much work with um, uh, adapting it, not only to host a myriad of different VMs in an intelligent back-end cache way, where hardware resources are still kind of usable to the rest of the system unless you specifically choose to partition them off. And with Active Backup Suite, having VM backups very much factored into it in conjunction with your VM environment, and it's just a great entry point into the field of virtual machine utilization for um, SMB and prosumer home users. Um, now, the next tier up, and again, I know this is going to be an era of contention. It is, uh, this harks back to a comparison we did, I think about a month and a half ago. My second place pick for the standard all boxes ticked um, NAS for virtual machines is from QNAP, the TSH886. Now, this is technically an 8-bay device, but it is 6 hard drive bays and 2 SATA SSD bay. There's also two NVMe SSD caching bays inside, just like the 1621, but these slots can also be used for raw storage. That's NVMe raw storage options 
built in. This NAS has got four two time uh, four two point five QBE LAN slots as well as two PCIe Gen three times eight slots for upgrade cards. There's a lot of beefy hardware in there and a far more modern gen Xeon based CPU in there, the sixteen twenty two. It's a quad core, it's got some serious power behind it, and it arrives at sixteen hundred NICA. So yes, very comparable to that sixteen twenty one access that we've already talked about. But the important point here is that the um, 886 not only arrives what, what I would argue to be better hardware and a newer gen CPU and a better utility of the available hardware, although lacking 10 GBE, which in VMs is not as important at this end, I would also say that the fact that the H886 arrives with the ZFS as its file system is where the true performance of those VMs really get a chance to shine. Uh, with ZFS, you have a lot more um, data coalescing, inline um, data compression, inline deduplication. You have got a whole layer removed from the storage pool volume traditional system, allowing for much, much higher resource utilization and performance. Uh, not resource utilization, more out of the utilization. On top of that, you have got the ability to have raids being built exceptionally quickly, as long as raid, uh, as well as raid resilvering taking place. Um, uh, whenever you need it and more importantly what I think to be more important the idea that the system can adapt and take a lot more hits in the way that ZFS can with its triple parity and faster RAID resyncing that if you're a VM user that's going to be deploying multiple VMs this is going to be desirable and finally there is virtualization station arguably to date in my opinion at least the best NAS-based virtual machine software out there. Not only does it support more kinds of VM than anyone else, not only is it hugely configurable, allowing you to add graphics cards and um, assign all of the ports on the system effectively, one or all, to a single or multiple VMs. On top of that, these VMs can also be downloaded directly from their own VM marketplace. You can download a Windows VM from within the system and have it ready to deploy very, very quickly. That is something that's just not present on the Synology system, and that's what solidifies the H886 there in the second place there as the standard VM NAS. So what is what I believe to be the top one? Well, it has to be, for me, the TVS872 XT, a NAS that I've talked about on this channel several times, a six-core Intel i5 8th gen uh, NAS, um, uh, which has DDR4 at 16 gig inside. It is a powerhouse and that amount of capability and all of the features and functionality that i mentioned in the 8886 the majority of those are available straight away off the bat in the 872 xt it is worth highlighting that the 872 xt is ext4 by default and the 886 has that zfs qts hero but Hopefully QNAP will get the licensing available for this 872XT so you can just download and install QTS Hero on this. You will have to reformat, but it will be worth it to take advantage of all of those features and functionality. And remember, the 872 just has that hugely capable CPU and an Intel Core i5, which in virtual machine circles and certainly with VMs with more of a graphical angle to them, the embedded graphics on that Intel Core will be hugely beneficial. Plus, this system goes up to 64 gig of memory, and of course, it has loads of ports and features and functionality which are lacking in the 886, such as Thunderbolt connectivity, such as 10 GBE, and overall, it's just a better choice for storage. It's got the NVMe slots inside, it's got the hard drive slots, it gives you everything bar ZFS that the H. 886 presents to you only more so and that's why it still continues to win my best of uh, the year videos because it just brings so much to the party and arriving at around 1900 pounds it's only 300 quid more than as we just talked about and when you look at how much you're getting for your money and how much for your business you can do not just in terms of vms but more that's why it's my favorite. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have, click like, and if you want to learn more, click subscribe. In the description, you will find a link to the products today, but moreover, the link to the NC Best Of article, which will explain why these three have been our top pick and far more information about why I think they're the best VM NAS of 2020 to buy. I'll see you next time.